Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here. We are back and this is Google Glass. Now, something that a lot of people ask when you know you go out and walk around with this thing on your face, a lot of people ask the same set of questions. One, what is glass? What is that thing on your face? Two, what does it do? And three, what does it look like while you're wearing it? What do you see through glass? So without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, this here, this exact model that we're looking at is the Explorer edition of Google Glass. And that's a bit more important than a lot of people realize. Basically, this is not the final version of the product. There will be an evolution in software and hardware before an actual consumer edition is created. In fact, there's been several software updates already. But for now, the Explorer edition is a limited edition early version for people willing to go out and explore and give feedback for Google about glass. Aesthetically, it's a pretty interesting little device because it sits on your face like a regular pair of glasses, but, well, there are no actual lenses. There's no glass in Google Glass, except for this prism here. And the other thing about it that's different is it's asymmetrical. So typically, when you're wearing glasses, there's the same thing on both sides. With glass, all of the smartphone components and all of the things in Google Glass that make it what it is are all on your right-hand side. Now, while glass does have mostly smartphone insides, what it doesn't have is a cellular radio, which means it can't connect to data by itself. So what it does do is connect to either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth tethering to your smartphone and connect to the My Glass app on your Android or iOS device. And that's very important because without it, you wouldn't be able to do anything on Glass unless you had a device with you connected to it. So this is really what's gonna power Glass and make it do all that it does when it connects to the internet and pulls any sort of data. So how does it actually look to be looking through the actual prism in Google Glass? Well, Google says that it's supposed to look approximately like a 25 inch display from eight feet away. So if you have a 25 inch computer monitor, back up your chair, roll back eight feet away, and that's about what it'll look like. Now it's obviously not an HD display. In fact, it's around 640 by 360. But the idea here is that this is all that you look at when you interface with Google Glass. So it's pretty important. Essentially, it's a square that is fixed in the upper right side of your vision. It's not in the corner. It's not totally crazy, like hard to reach stretch with your eyes bad, but it's definitely out of the way. So it's not gonna be intruding your vision all the time. So when looking through the prism, it'll look about like that. That's about right. So when wearing glass, natively glass by itself can do seven things with it. You can do seven things. You can take a picture, record a video, navigate somewhere, send a message, call someone, Hangouts and Google. But let's not forget that this is the, like we said, the Explorer edition of Google Glass, not the final consumer version. So the list of things that it can do is limited, but the idea here is that this is a new form factor. This is the beginning of a new sort of paradigm. We have Android phones, that's one form factor. We have Android tablets, that's another form factor. We'll have a whole bunch of smartwatches soon, that's another form factor. Glass, which is a wearable tech on your face, is a totally different form factor. So think of this as sort of like an Android phone with no apps on it. Out of the box, it can do you know a sort of core set of functions, and that's normal for an Android phone. That's a small list of things it can do out of the box. But once you add an app store, once you add the connectivity that a whole bunch of developers and a developer army kind of support, that list of things is going to get a lot longer and a lot more interesting. There are a few officially supported third-party apps right now for Glass, you know, Twitter, Facebook, there's a New York Times app for sort of pop-up news alerts. But in the Glass Explorer community, there's a whole bunch of developers doing their thing and making a ton of different apps for Glass. And of course, when there's a final uh, release where pretty much anyone can develop for it and anyone can buy it, that sort of mainstream apps are kind of a no-brainer. Expect to see a YouTube app, an Instagram app. These kind of things are pretty much undoubtedly gonna to come to Glass when it's finally available for everyone. But back to those seven things. Those seven functions of Google Glass are really not all that different from the core functions of an Android phone without any apps installed. If you bought a Nexus 4 and never used anything in the Play Store, you'd get a pretty similar list of things that you can do with it out of the box. But again, like we said, this is the Explorer edition. Many more things are gonna be added. Now for a brief rundown of these seven. Okay, I'm gonna go through all seven of these things. First of all, all these things are gonna be done with an interaction with the trackpad on the side of glass. So there's a swipe forward, backward, 
down and a tap. And this actually feels pretty natural with the sort of light tapping. You're not really bashing it against your own head, but you're just doing slight swip swipes and light taps and things like that. And that feels normal. So number one, you can take pictures. So you can say, okay, glass, take a picture. Or if you don't want to do that at all, you can just tap that photo button that's on the top of glass. And I just took a picture of you, the camera and the light. So that's what you look like right now. Uh, and if I want to take a video, that's the next function of glass. Of course, you can say, okay, glass, record a video and you'll start recording a video or you can actually hold down the photo button on the top of glass and you automatically start taking a 10 second video. So you're gonna start looking at what I'm seeing, which is basically a bunch of lights and a microphone. But uh, yeah, that's what it looks like to take a video with glass. It's automatically gonna take a 10 second video. So if you wanna extend it, you have to tap the photo button again and you'll get like an unlimited recording time until like the battery dies, until you stop recording. The photo and video quality are really pretty good and this is one of the defining features of what makes glass so special because it's basically a first person look at what someone's actually doing. Now it's a little bit above your field of vision, so if you were like handheld gaming or something like that, you kind of have to look down a little bit to get it in your field of view. I found the most part though, most of the things that I do with glass are pretty amazing and you would never be able to get any sort of camera angle like that uh, doing anything else, especially because you have both your hands free, which is cool. Uh, the video quality is also really good because it's such a wide angle lens. It uses very similar optics that the Galaxy Nexus did, but that doesn't stop it from being uh, really quite good. And also the photos that I took, again, from that first person view were really good because it takes a burst of, I think, 10 different shots of a bunch of different uh, exposures and gets a really nice high dynamic range shot. And again, that combined with the wide angle makes it look a lot like what you would see uh, out of the human eye. So it's really, really close to first person view of what regular people look at. So the third thing Glass does is walking directions, driving, it's just navigation with Google Maps. So you can say, okay, Glass, get directions to, and then say wherever you wanna go, B and H for example. And it'll give you the directions and an actual real time arrow where you would be going on Glass with you know the directions to where you're going. You can do walking, navigation, biking navigation and driving navigation. And I think this is actually probably the most awesome of the built-in features in glass. Because if you're in an unfamiliar place and you don't really know where you're going, you move your head around and you get to see the exact direction of the orientation of the arrow change. And you can just literally follow the arrow in glass to get where you're going. And that's really powerful stuff. Now four and five, you can send a message or place a call using glass. And that's because it's tethered to your phone with the My Glass app. So you have a certain list of your starred contacts that you can dial whenever you want. So you can say, okay, glass, send a message to John. I'll be late, I'm in traffic, see you in 20 minutes or OK Glass, call John, and it'll start calling that person. So you have to have that person start already in order to make a call to them. Otherwise, it would be kind of crazy to search through your whole Android contacts library, but that's pretty cool. Hands-free, you could be you know, totally you know, busy with your hands and not have any sort of control over your smartphone and still place a call to someone or send a message if it's important. And number six, last but definitely not least, is the Google search and Google Now. Now you guys already know how Google search works, so I can say OK Glass, Google, how long is the Golden Gate Bridge? And you guys already know basically how Google search works, but it'll read the answer back to me. The Golden Gate Bridge is 8,980 feet, uh, 2,737 meters, if that matters to you. So you already know how that works, and it works the same way that it does with Google Now on your phone. But Google Now on your phone also gives you sort of predictive search results and gives you relative rele relevant information wherever you go. Glass will do the same thing. So you can swipe through the glass interface and view all this information where you'll need to know, you know, the weather where you are, some uh, translation data if you're in a different country, all kinds of different crazy things. Uh, the same way Google Now on your phone would do. But the bottom line with the Glass Explorer edition is this. This is not the final version. This is not where you're going to be able to buy in a few weeks or months when there's a final version available. The final version is going to have updated hardware, is going to have updated software, and it's going to have an updated price because right now the Explorer edition costs $1,500 in the United States for all Glass Explorers. Hopefully it'll be nowhere near $1,500 when it's finally mass produced. It'll hopefully be uh, way less than half of that, but go ahead and leave what you would pay for Google Glass like this in the comment section below that like button. I feel like a lot of people would probably max out at around $500 maybe less, maybe 400 or 300, but we don't know what the price is going to be. But this is a Google Glass Explorer edition. Uh, I'll have more videos on this to come. I have a lot more content that I wanna show you guys uh, regarding glass and a whole bunch of other tech stuff. But if you enjoyed this one, definitely feel free to give a thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to see more glass coverage and more tech videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.